ルカがあの島に行ってしまいましたあの島に無理を承知でお願いしますルカを助けてくださいAs the chapter starts, we find ourselves in control of a brand new character on what I can assume is just a different part of the island in search of Ruka. Now as to who we are, we're not exactly filled in about, but if we walk a little bit forward, we will get a little bit more information. We find a notebook on the ground, and it is our character's notebook, Shoshira Kirishima. And as we read the documents inside, we find that uh, Choshiro here is actually a police detective that rescued the five girls from the island so many years ago. And along with that notebook, which will be a very handy tool to us for the rest of the game as it will collect all the information that we gather. We also find another tape recorder that Choshiro will be using himself, and a tape that we will be listening to shortly. At that time, I found the Ruka that I found in the room in the building. それで全てが終わったと思っていただがあの時の5人のうち2人が死んだ事件は終わっていないのか So as you can see on the screen there our notebook has been updated with some of the information regarding the kidnapping but I think we can probably get a little bit more information from that tape we found in the tape recorder Yet again, we see a mention of the name Hibara. Now, in the initial document we got there, it mentioned that the hospital was named Hibara, and there could be a definite possibility the man we saw enter this building is the Hibara that we are looking for. So we should probably head inside and see if we can't catch up with him. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do
これを使うことがないといいのですが Before we get too far in our, into our investigation, though, we are greeted with our first ghost battle as Choshiro. And we see probably one of the most unique features about Choshiro in the fact that he does combat not with a camera, but with a flashlight. Now, the flashlight works very similar to the camera. You just basically point and shoot, but instead of having to focus on a ghost, instead you just hold, you just aim and hold down the A button, then let it go. It's a pretty simple combat mechanic, but it was meant to mostly show off the features of the Wii mode. So you can see that as we hold down A, the beam's strength increases, and then we just release it, and it does damage. Really, Choshiro's combat is very fast paced, you're just meant to rapid fire shots off as quickly as possible. And that is why this just initial combat sequence, we are already greeted with three ghosts at once. And it's just because Choshiro is pretty powerful overall, just with his baseline、uh, flashlight. The only weakness to the flashlight is the fact that it has to recharge using the moon. You may have noticed during that combat sequence that there was that little icon of the moon in the lower right hand corner. And the more shots we take, the more that will deplete that moon icon. And to renew the moon icon, we have to leave our action pose to allow the flashlight to recharge. But for finishing that combat sequence, we are given a special lens along with a returning function, the switch, which will allow us to switch between power lenses. And since we're already given a very special situational lens, we might as well go ahead and equip it. Now, if we look at the function of the develop lens, it may not seem entirely useful, and it is very situational, but it is good to keep it equipped at all times, and we'll be seeing why in just a little bit. But while we are here, I guess we might as well power or look at his stats for the flashlight, as they are just a tad bit different. Power is obviously the same, depth is pretty much the same as range. For the camera. One of the primary differences, though, is that Choshiro's flashlight works more off a combo system. So, this last feature, or this last function here, chain, just increases the amount of points as long as we keep a combo going. But, since the power function is pretty cheap, we're going to go ahead and power that up. I mean, we are already relatively powerful, but never hurts to have a little bit more power. And also, since we are not faced with any ghosts right now, we can go ahead and collect the items in this large lobby area. There's something hidden away over here. It's a bit, there it is, it's a bit hard to find. This、uh, note here we find on the desk is our first mention of something called Luna Sedata Syndrome. As far as I can tell, Luna Sedata is rough Latin for moon sleep, and that document just went over some protocol that I guess the hospital had involving sleepwalkers during different phases of the moon. We'll definitely be learning more about Luna Sedata as we continue through. For right now, it seems like we have a number of different places we can go. And really, that elevator seems to be catching my interest. Elevator, the 
地下の隠された場所に降りたルカたちを見つけた場所もし灰原がまだこの島に潜んでいるとしたらあなたも病気なの So we get a small little snippet of Choshiro's past, and it does tell us that this elevator is going to be our main focal point for this chapter, but well, it's always a better idea to follow the vanishing ghost, especially in, the, in this situation where the elevator is currently inoperable. Maybe that young ghost will lead us into some place that we can power up the elevator. Question is, though, there are quite a few doors, and... I don't know, maybe if we look around we can find a clue as to where to go. <laughs> and, as per usual, the game is pretty quick in holding our hand and showing us where we need to go. So, it is nice to get a little bit of change of scenery. I mean, we've seen the previous interiors of what appears to be a residential area, and we've now gotten to a more medical facility, but this area does have a definite darker side. As we read this chart here for an Asagi, a very young child who is apparently going a special surgical procedure to combat the Luna Sedata Syndrome. The main question, questionable thing here is the fact that they're not really telling the parents of Asagi that they are doing this surgical procedure. So there's definitely something underhanded going on here at this hospital. Also in the bookshelf here, we do find our first note from the assistant to Dr. Haibara. Seems that this young doctor had gotten the opportunity to come to the island, considering that he was a neurological doctor, to help with the doctor's, or Dr. Haibara's studies into the Luna Sedata Central. It seems that Dr. Haibara had some unprecedented treatments, such as Lunar Melody, to deal with the psychological aspects of the Luna Sedata Central. And I think. We've currently already gotten some assaults from this Lunar Melody treatment ourselves. But as we find our first doll here, it does give me an opportunity to show off the situational aspect of the develop lens for our flashlight. Because the only way that we can take a picture of these Hazuki dolls as Choshiro is to use the develop lens. If we try to use anything else, it will not take a picture of the doll, and it can be pretty frustrating, as we will be seeing shortly enough. Another thing to keep in mind is the fact you don't want to get into a fight with enemies using the developed lens as it will do zero damage. So it's it's a questionable gameplay decision, but So we get our first vanishing ghost, getting a quick shot of Asagi. And you may be questioning how you take a picture with a flashlight, and about the best I can say is just suspend your disbelief. We, uh, Choshiro is just able to do it somehow or another. But I assume that Asagi was trying to draw our attention to something. And with nothing else left in here to investigate, we do find... Yeah, she was trying to draw our attention to a coloring book here on the bed. And this gives us a little bit of a insight into Asagi's 
thinking. She is clearly a very frightened child, especially with the doctors telling her that she's going to have to go undergo brain surgery. And I assume it's not affecting her very well as she goes on about her melting brain. But we don't, we're not given too much time to linger on that as we are immediately greeted by another vanishing ghost walking the hallways. Yeah, overall, I really, I really enjoy the dilapidated look of this hospital environment. All the Hazuki dolls waiting in the wings, being bad omens. All the grisly posters, probably giving some advisory warnings about the Luna Sedata Syndrome. Really just reinforces the fact that this was less of a place of healing and more of a place of experimentation. With another vanishing ghost gone, we find ourselves in what I can only assume to possibly be a break room area, where we find an item waiting in an ashtray, and it's a very important item, as it is our first key. Along with the key, we do get a map of the area. It seems that we are going to be heading all the way back down to the first floor. Before we head down to the first floor, though, I did want to point out this interesting poster here on the wall. For those of you that have maybe played Metroid before, that image may seem somewhat familiar, as that, as far as I can tell, is a Metroid. And I think that's mostly due to the fact that this was made by Tecmo, who around the same time was also making Metroid Other M. But we are given a much easier ghost encounter here. It's just a single ghost by itself. And it's one I think we fought quite a few times before. The main difficulty in a lot of these areas is not so much sheer numbers, but just the fact that there is a lot of it, a lot of the environment that, through some means or another, will just completely block the flashlight beam. Without the normal viewfinder of the camera, we are left a lot of time to guess whether or not Choshiro's beam will actually do any real damage to the enemy. And along with the fact that Shoshiro has no lock-on capabilities, it makes combat a bit difficult sometimes with Shoshiro. At least for the most part, getting the Vanishing Ghost, though, is a tad bit easier, because you can just hold down the A button, and once you get in range of a Vanishing Ghost, the flashlight will just automatically take a picture, so it's quite a bit more lenient. And also here we get our first clear look at the aforementioned Dr. Hibata. Now that may leave you wondering who was the Hibata that we followed into the building. Well, Dr. Hibata had a son named Yu Hibata. I'll probably be showing some of the documentation in the handbooks that or in the notebook that Choshiro has that illustrates this a bit more, but Yu Haibara was another doctor here at the hospital, and, well, let's just say that the Haibara bloodline was not always the most ethical bloodline in the world. Well, 
but even though we have a vanishing ghost leading us to where we need to go, I do hear the familiar ringing of a telephone, which means that we get to have another ghostly phone call. Yeah, that ghostly phone call bringing up a very familiar theme to the Fatal Frame series, and that is the idea of repetition. Whether it be a ghost stuck in an echo of the past repeating infinitum, their actions before they died, or just the unnecessary repetition of a ritual. Repetition is really a large idea and continuing theme throughout the Fatal Frame series. Even though we are greeted with a fairly spooky hallway here, there isn't too much to it, just an item waiting on the bench here. Very nice little amount of blue crystals. Should be good to upgrade our camera and flashlight in the future. We find that the surgery prep room is a little bit under code. Especially with the vermin hiding in the vent systems here. <laughs> but outside of the doll, there are a few other nice little pickups here to get in the room, such as some more herbal medicine. And there's one pretty tricky item next to the garbage can down there to have our flashlight hit. But what's in the locker? Oh. <laughs> just, just a cat scare. But there is something more important in the other locker here. And it is a pretty verbose magazine article involving the mysterious, di mysterious disappearances at the island. Now, for the most part, it's just more, more or less a sensational magazine article about a mysterious island of missing people, but I think most importantly it brings up the Luna Sedata Syndrome outside of the island, and also it brings up just the vague, vague, vague idea that there's a possibility that the Luna Sedata Syndrome could be contagious, and not just something sp special to inhabitants of the island. And I think that is something we will be finding out a little bit more later on with all the documentation in this chapter. You do want to be a little bit quick in the surgery room here and make sure you position yourself correctly to get the, the shot of the vanishing ghost of the assistant and what appears to be a nurse. Seems that me, we have possibly walked into a surgery in progress or maybe the aftermath of a surgery, it's hard to tell. But I think before we investigate the body on the table, my doll sense is tingling just a tiny bit. Yeah, I see you down there. 
And if you're wondering why I tend to pause just a little bit while I'm aiming, it's because you have to be very particular whenever you're taking the shot of the doll. You may notice that my beam kind of changes from a blue to a purple. The purple is to signify that you had now have the ability to take a picture of the doll. With no other items in the room, I guess we're left to check and see what's on the slab. It's just a nasty little trap to get us in a pretty easy struggle with Asagi here, I must admit. She doesn't really have any special tricks, and she has very low health, so she's pretty easy to deal with, but we are given another entry into her diary. And I think just as with Maruka, as we progress further and further in Asagi's storyline, it gets a lot more bleaker and much, much more incoherent. Though I can only assume that is mostly due to the very experimental brain surgery that was done on her. experimental to the point of possibly being unnecessary. And we find here that Asagi died at the age of six due to complications from surgery and what the doctors have, have accredited to just an accompaniment of physical frailty. Yeah, we've gotten some impressions before that that is one of the later stages that uh, Lun Luna Sadata can give, which is just a general deterioration of uh, the physical properties of a person. And I'm sure that's only expounded upon whenever you attempt to do brain surgery on them. Seems we have finally caught up with what the assistant was trying to draw our attention to, but before we get to that, there is one other quick note to get here on the shelf. And it is another short little leaflet regarding the Kagura dance that was the decade anniversary dance that would take place on the island to interact with the dead. But most importantly, what we get from this document is the very specific date that the Kagero dance would take place on. And it's a very coincidental date indeed. Yeah, there's probably some definite connection between the kidnapped girls, the Haibara family, and this Kagura dance. But let's go ahead and see what the assistant was looking at on the desk over here. It's some more outlining notes about the assistant's interactions and day-to-day -day life at the Haibata Hospital. He's gotten to learn a little bit more about the doctor's practices using both normal medicine and experimental folksy medicine. But also he's learned just about the different stages of the syndrome itself, which kind of a physical breakdown, a loss of memory, just a lot of things we've already learned about in the past. 
More importantly, though, we do get a brand new key, which should allow for further exploration of the hospital. Yeah, it is somewhat interesting to learn that Dr. Hibato was not only using the aforementioned brain surgery, but was also using probably some island remedies to try to combat this Luna Sedata syndrome. But before we leave the room, as you can probably assume, there is a doll hidden away in here somewhere. You can see her head poking out of the cabinet here. For some reason, in this chapter, they really felt the need to shove a Hazuki doll in almost every room, and I don't know if it was more for just a item collectathon aspect, or, or maybe to to give some darker, deeper meaning to the the rooms of the the hospital itself. But I I tend to think it's probably more just to give it a whole darker feel to have these evil dolls hiding in each one of the rooms. journey back to the lobby can't be as easy as that. We have a brand new ghost encounter here with the assistant himself. He is more obnoxious than anything. He has more health than most of the ghosts we have fought so far. And he has one special attack that we'll be seeing later, but for right now, I think it's just a good idea that we go ahead and kill him. because killing him nets us a little bit more information, especially in regards to the kidnapping case. I can only assume that from this documentation, the assistant had turned in some information to the local authorities, probably to incriminate the hospital and get the authorities out here at all to the hospital, considering that I guess there were probably a lot of children dying can only imagine that the s maddening screams of children probably reverberated endlessly through this entire establishment. very careful here because, as you can tell by the radar, we are in the midst of a pincer maneuver between Asagi and that other female ghost. All in all, still, as long as you've got down the rapid-fire action of the flashlight, it's not too difficult, especially if you can take care of one of the ghosts as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you will find yourselves in a very, very sticky situation here, and you'll find yourself quickly overwhelmed. But with all that out of the way, I think we are now safe to head to the lobby and head to that examining room area. But for now, though, I think we're going to leave that next area and this telephone call for next time. Hopefully you will join me then as we head into the examining room and hopefully get down into the basement of the hospital.